Hi, I'm Pastor Matt, the pastor at Christ the King Lutheran Church in Westchester, Ohio. Thank you so much for joining us for our weekly worship webcast. Please be sure to check out our webpage at www.ctkluth.org for more information about our mission and our ministry and to find ways that you can join us in creatively bringing God's Word to life. Speaking of creative, we are continuing our observance of creation season. This week, God creates vegetation. Jesus declares himself to be the true vine, and we are the branches. I invite you to focus your hearts and your minds on the true vine, Jesus Christ, as we experience worship together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. A reading from Genesis. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. flowers from their slumber. Hope is provided for us in His steadfast love. And we sing, praise to the Father, all glory to the Son. Praise to the Holy Spirit, almighty and three in one. We sing, praise to the Father, all glory to the Son. Praise to the Holy Spirit, almighty and three in one. Thanksgiving. Make a melody to God that does inspire. Because of what He's done, our life is now worth living. Let us sing His praises with the saintly choir. We sing, Praise to the Father, all glory to the Son. Praise to the Holy Spirit, Almighty Three in One. Father, all glory to the Son. Praise the Holy Spirit, Almighty Three in One. reading from Colossians. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. 
You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's time for our gospel interruption. Today, in our gospel lesson, Jesus describes himself as the vine and calls us the branches. I've invited a special guest for our gospel interruption. It's Susan Fox. She is a landscape architect and she knows a lot more about plants and horticulture than I ever will. So she's going to show us how we actually are grafted in to the vine that is Jesus Christ. So horticulturally speaking, as you said in the gospel, this is the vine and this is the branch. In plant world, this is the rootstock and this is the scion. But I think it is much better to think of it as the mother plant and the daughter plant because you graft to maybe make more plants, but you also can graft to make stronger plants or plants that could do things that they couldn't otherwise. But it's all because of the strength of the mother plant. That's where it comes from. So you just take the mother plant and you insert the daughter plant, and then you'd wrap that all up together with something that keeps the water in. So it's sort of like the mother plant is literally nursing the daughter plant. And then they start growing together as one and all the branches come off and makes beautiful grapes and beautiful wine or whatever you wanted to do. That's how you graft. Let us pray. Gracious creator, we thank you for grafting us into your family, for sending us your son, Jesus the vine, to give us strong roots to rely on when we feel like we might wither. Help us to remember into whose family we have been grafted. Help your love to flow through us so that we can share it with others. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the vine who anchors all of us in the love of God. Amen. When I was in college, I used to uh, drive past 
several vineyards in the Willamette Valley. I would make a trip from my home in Hillsboro, Oregon, down south to Corvallis to go to school. And sometimes that drive seemed like it took forever. I was anxious and not excited to have to return back to the world of academia, especially after being able to do my laundry and enjoy home-cooked meals. But there were some beautiful things to see on the way. There were these vineyards. And the Willamette Valley is well known for its wines. It's award-winning. The soil is rich there. But one of the things that would always strike me was, depending on the season, I would see all of these vines that would be growing. But in the winter, they would all be pruned back. There would be almost nothing there. It looked like they were dead. But every spring, they would produce abundantly more grapes than I even could have imagined. And all of the workers would be diligently out there in the fields tending to the harvest. It was always something to look forward seasonally as I would drive down to school. It reminds me very much of our gospel lesson today. I'm sure that Jesus also has this in mind as he is calling himself the vine and calling us the branches. This is something that's really crucial for us to remember. A lot of times we get confused about how we are saved as Christians or what happens and the kinds of power that we have in order to be good or to do good in the world. And we forget that goodness and righteousness and salvation do not come from us. We are weak, we are broken, we are human, and we are sinful. It's just who we are. It's unfortunately part of the human condition. There's nothing that we can do about it. The good news for you and for me is that our salvation is not dependent upon our goodness or upon our righteousness. Left to our own devices, we would wither and die. We would not produce any good fruit at all. We would look like that Willamette Valley vineyard in the wintertime. There would just be nothing, crispy and dry, and that would be it. But Jesus the vine openly welcomes us into the family of God. There's a process that vintners will use in order to help different species of grapes grow and thrive. Some of the grapes don't have roots that are strong enough to withstand drought conditions or some of the weather in which grapes might be planted. And so a little trick happens where a cut will be made into the vine and a piece, a branch will be inserted and then it is wrapped around until that cut heals and the vine adopts the branch as its own. The same life-giving sap flows through it and into the branch and allows it to produce good fruit. That's the same for you and I. We are grafted into God's family. Jesus the vine calls us in to be renewed and strengthened. And the good news for us, it's not our strength that we have to rely on or our goodness that we rely on, but we rely on the strength and the goodness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the vine whose roots go deep and hold firm even in the midst of the biggest storms which may assail us. Listen, life is difficult and nobody is getting out of life alive. We are all going to struggle. We will all suffer. But knowing that we are not alone, knowing that we have a strength that is beyond ours that we can rely upon, can give us comfort and peace. As Jesus says in our gospel lesson today, he wants us to understand whose we are in order that our joy might be made complete. You can think of it as that sap or that life-giving fluid flowing 
from the vine into the branches, inspiring them to grow and to bear fruit that will then offer new seeds. As part of the vine, being grafted into that vine, our job is to bear fruit and to plant seeds. That's our job. But you and I can't look at anybody else and tell them to grow or grow fatter fruit or better fruit. It's their job to do that work. And you and I both are under the tender care of the planter, the one who has created all vegetation. Jesus says what doesn't grow will be pruned back. Now, when I would drive past all of those vineyards in the wintertime and see how they had all been clipped back, I thought, you've killed all of these plants. But it's a sign, it's a, a symbol to the plants that they are to grow again. All of the energy that is stored in the roots goes up the vine and out into the branches to produce more fruit than we could possibly imagine. It's how it works. At least that's what Susan Fox told me. You saw her earlier in the Gospel Interruption. I don't want to pretend like I know all of this stuff by myself. But pruning means that those old dead things have to be taken away in order that new life might be brought about. It means that as we understand that we are called and claimed by Jesus, we are called to higher things, to love as Christ has first loved us, to serve as Christ has first served us. Christ loved us to the pain of death on the cross and all the way to resurrection. And pruning ourselves means that there will be difficult times that we will encounter but we will grow from those times. This is the challenge that we face, is that people who are theologians of glory always act as if God will give them whatever they want, that the Lord their God is a vending machine. All they need to do is be faithful enough and pray hard enough and make sure that they're only reading the Bible and not distracting themselves, and God will bless them and everything will be wonderful. But that's not how the world works. The world is a world that is broken and filled with anxiety and fear and pain. Our suffering does not come about because God hates us. Our suffering happens because sometimes choices were made that we have absolutely no control over. Sometimes it just is simply our own sinful nature coming out, the old self rearing its ugly head once again. And so we encounter these times which not only help to make us stronger, but give us an opportunity to watch as fruit will grow. Pruning is never easy. It is painful. It can take what looked like it was a vibrant and beautiful bush and can actually make it look ugly. But what we think might be ugly has so much potential, so much beauty in the eyes of the Creator who will nurture it and continue to let those good parts of it grow to bear good fruit. And the challenge for us is to prune those practices which don't bear good fruit, which are not good witnesses for the kingdom, which do not allow seeds to be planted. We can prune ourselves from gossip, from slander, from anger that is unproductive, and work towards being loving and kind and serving in the way that Christ did, which, yes, at times requires sacrifice from us. But being able to endure those times of pruning allows us to experience the abundance of God in ways we never imagined or expected it to happen. And it's not reliant on us. We can work as hard as we can to get rid of those bad fruits, 
to develop the fruits of the Spirit as best we can, and they take practice. But it is God who nurtures and allows that fruit to grow. And as the fruit grows, then we have an opportunity to plant seeds, to find other people who might be good soil, and plant those seeds of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness. Our job isn't to make them grow. It's simply to plant seeds as witnesses of the vine to whom we are grafted, to show the divinity of that vine to other people. Not our goodness or our righteousness, but God's goodness and righteousness for them through Jesus the vine who calls us to be those branches to reach out. It is amazing to see how after vines establish themselves, all of the tendrils that will go everywhere. I'm actually really excited because we had some volunteer pumpkins show up in our compost area out by the, uh, the uh, community harvest garden. And the tendrils have grown everywhere and there's actually some beautiful pumpkins that we are excited to share with our neighbors. That was all God. None of us intended to plant a pumpkin patch right there. But that's where the seeds were planted and that's where they grew. We have no idea when God will be calling others to join into this body, to be grafted in. But our job isn't to monitor to see who is growing good enough or who needs more pruning. Our job is to only focus on the goodness of the vine and continue to point others to Christ's goodness and love and mercy. We can experience our own growth through difficult and painful times. To be able to go through those winters of our discontent, our fear and anxiety, to see the spring of new life blossom. It is a challenge for us because we live in a world that is constantly afraid. But to have Christ be our vine allows us to have an anchor that holds us in place, a place where we can look back and can focus on what is important so that we can experience true joy in the world. Not happiness, but joy. The joy of contentment in knowing that there is nothing in this world or in the next that will separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. The joy in knowing that God walks alongside us and watches over us. The joy in knowing that God keeps promises. And the promise made to us through the vine is that we are connected to the source of life forever and ever. And we continue to do that work of bearing fruit, of trying to let go of those old dead things which weigh us down, knowing that it is the one who is the gardener, the creator of all vegetation, that does the pruning. It's up to us to be able to let go and to look forward to where we will grow again. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.
gathered together by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Creator God, we thank you for making your Son Jesus the vine and we the branches. Help us to remember where our strength and our joy come from. Remind us that we have been adopted and grafted into your family and that we receive your grace and forgiveness on a daily basis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask that you would be with those who are having a hard time putting down roots, those who are newly experiencing homelessness, those people who are refugees from war-torn countries, those who are refugees from climate disaster. Help us to open our eyes to the ways in which not only we can help them to experience your love, grace, and mercy, but also that we can help to graft them into your family through our loving care. Help our actions bear good fruit in order that the world may come to know your love through us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we ask that you would be with all who are struggling today, those dealing with mental health and physical health issues, those who are unsure of their next steps. Guide the hands of doctors, and nurses and medical practitioners who provide skilled care for all who are in need. Bless those who continue to wait for answers and life-saving medicines. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we thank you for all the saints who have gone before us, for those who have shown us what pruning looks like in their lives, who have continued to grow in their faith through you. We thank you for all who have lived into their baptismal promise, and we ask that you would help us to retain joy in our lives when sorrow and grief surround us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these prayers we lift up to you, O Lord, as well as the prayers in our hearts. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the vine. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for worship this week. Please be sure to check out our Facebook page and to like us so that you can keep up to date on our most recent mission and ministry activities. A challenge for you this week is to think about how you can rely more on the vine than on yourself. It is hard because we are self-centered, but ways in which you can put more trust in what God is doing for you through Jesus Christ, and less on your own efforts to be better or do better. It's resting in that grace that comes to all of us through the vine. And now, receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and grant you peace. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
praise the Lord, how good it is to sing His praises. He is gracious and deserves our pleasing song. He heals the broken heart, the downtrodden He raises. It is fitting that we praise Him all day long, and we sing praise to the Father, all glory to the Son. Almighty three in one, we sing praise to the Father, all glory to the